one thing I enjoy. It's the good old end of humanity. I like the idea of how it could all end, but that's a topic for another video. Here's our hypothetical situation. It's the end of the world, and you have to pick strategically 10 games to bring with you. Let's also just assume that you have an internet connection and every game console known to man. These are going to be the only games that you will play for the rest of your life. I'm Matt, aka Chunky Monkey Games, and this is the top 10 games to have in an apocalypse. When thinking of entries for this list, I immediately thought of the Roller Coaster Tycoon games. If the title didn't make it obvious enough, Roller Coaster Tycoon is a game where you build a theme park and try to get the satisfaction of the customers up. That's cool and all, but I know a pretty cheaty way to win the game, and fast. Step 1. Build a roller coaster that will launch the riders into the rival park. Step B. Watch as they all die in your rival's park, which will bring down their rating to a point where you will beat the game. In the immortal words of T-Bone 105, cheap tactics are the best tactics. This game can give you a reminder of what life once was, or at least what you wish it was, in a sick, twisted way. Little known fact about me, I suck at Smite. Correction, I suck at MOBAs in general. Smite is different from other MOBAs in that it's from a third person perspective rather than a top down perspective. It really changes the way the game plays. This game has almost endless possibilities because of the number of gods in the game. There's so many different gods to master, each with different abilities. You could be playing as Jeb one minute and Ra the next. You could play Smite for hours on end and never get tired. You know, unless you get really mad like me. Cthulhu confirmed for Smite 2014! If you've seen my overrated games list, then you probably think that I hate Minecraft, but it's actually one of my favorite games that I've ever played. Vanilla Minecraft has enough to do already. You could armor yourself up in hardcore and try to kill the Ender Dragon, or just fool around with friends in creative mode. Another thing that makes Minecraft is replayable is the immense amount of mods. There are too many mods to count for Minecraft. There's Spider Queen, Pixelmon, Metroid, and Galacticraft, just to name a few. One of the best things you can do in this game is combine mods for the ultimate experience. You can essentially create any game you want by combining mods, which makes Minecraft easily one of the best games to have in an apocalypse. <laughs> So far, every game on this list has been on PC, so let's give our computer a break and play some Pokemon. I don't think I really have to explain much because every playthrough is different. Personally, I would go with the latest generation because it has the most Pokemon to catch, train, and battle with. Competitive battling is something I've been trying to get into so I could spend copious amounts of time perfecting my team to be the very best like no one ever was on this post-apocalyptic Earth. <laughs> GTA 5 is easily one of the most successful games of all time. It introduced the concept of switching between characters to complete the story, which is new to the GTA franchise. That's all fine and dandy, but I would rather play GTA Online. Sure, the community has devoted themselves to doing nothing except making millions off doing Rooftop Rumble, but it's one of the best games to fool around with friends in, and with monthly DLC being released and heists coming soon, GTA Online can only get better. <laughs> What better way to spend the apocalypse than playing a game about the apocalypse? Unturned is like a combination of Minecraft and DayZ. It has the blocky survival aspect of Minecraft and the scavenging zombie aspect of DayZ. I didn't know about this game until a few months ago and I don't really want to stop playing it. I don't even want to be editing this video right now, I just want to go play some Unturned. Planet Side 2 is like Halo, but better! In case you don't know, Planetside 2 is a sci-fi first-person shooter that has three different factions fighting against each other for their territory. The thing that makes this game different from other FPS is that these matches can go on for hours, days even. I once logged on after it being two days since I last played and the match was still a stalemate. It can keep you occupied for quite a while. It's one of those games where you lose track of time. The best part about this game is that the fan base isn't like Call of Duty where everyone hates everybody. It's fun playing alone and with friends, and even if you don't like FPSs, give this game a shot. I've never actually played Little Big Planet, but from what I understand, it's like Happy Wheels without a sadistic fan base. I hate every single one of you. I don't even have a PS3, and I know that this game has some really awesome community creations. Everyone can find something they like in the community created levels. There's always something new which makes it really easy to come back to, which is why it would be a good choice to have in the apocalypse. <laughs> A list like this wouldn't be complete without a life simulation game like The Sims. 
The Sims is one of the most replayable games of all time. And with all the expansion packs that make more money than the Nintendo DS, it makes the game so much more interesting. This is an apocalypse, so maybe you would try to recreate your former life with all your friends and family, or maybe make the life you always wish you had. It's always a good way to plan out your future housing situation for whenever you're out of that fallout vault thingy. Gary's Mod literally has limitless possibilities. There's so many things that you can do with this game. There's almost an infinite amount of free packs that you can get that adds so much more content to the game. There are also a lot of fun game modes that make the game super fun to play with friends. There's Prop Hunt, Hide and Seek, Escape from Peterborough, TTT, and I assume there's even more. The sandbox mode alone can be just as fun. Much like Minecraft, there's some community created adventure maps which can be just as fun as the sandbox mode. Some of the packs add some humorous things which can give you the laughter you need in the apocalypse. Gmod is definitely worth the $10 and is one of, if not the most content filled game I've ever played. Oh hey, thanks for watching my video. If you enjoyed this video, please should be sure to leave a like or maybe subscribe if you want. You know, it's not, it's not required. Be sure to leave your thoughts down below if you have any suggestions for the next top 10 and leave your list in the comments. My name is Matt aka Chunky Monkey Games and I'll see you in the next video. Peace out.